Okay, Community Matters, uh, 4 p.m. on a given Tuesday, 4 o'clock rock, and there's a double entendre. If you hadn't noticed, Community Matters. And that's Tom Yamachika. He's with the Hawaii uh, Tax Foundation. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on the show. And the reason is that you wrote a really sterling article this morning in Civil Beat. Tell us about the article. Well, we, we talked about um, the uh, new system of funding highways that our Department of Transportation is coming up with. Uh, they uh, have some very interesting ideas. Uh, they have, uh, I guess, they've seen the handwriting on the wall. They have a problem because uh, right now what they are spending for our roads uh, comes from what's called the Highway Fund. And the Highway Fund is fueled by a number of different things, mostly from the gasoline tax. Uh, our, our fuel tax, which is imposed on gasoline, among other fossil fuels, as well as uh, vehicle weight tax registration and you know, some, other, some other things. But uh, they've kind of been noticing that the amount uh, that they're getting uh, for year after year has been going down. And uh, this has been a problem that other states have experienced as well. Uh, and the reason is because one of the aims or the, um, uh, the reasons for the enactment of the fuel tax in the first place was, well, geez, uh, fossil fuel is not a good thing. Uh, we need to get people off of it. So that's the same reason why they, they tax tobacco or liquor or, or other... Th other incentive, disincentive kind of thing. Right, right, right. So they, it's like a sin tax. You, you've, you've heard of the, the phrase sin tax as it applies to uh, tobacco tax or or um, alcohol tax. Well, uh, part of the rationale for imposing a tax on fossil fuels is it's a sin tax, and they want people off of it. Well, guess what? The public is responding. <laughs> people are using, using less. People are going to alternative fuel vehicles. They're, they're going to hybrids. Uh, they're going to um, electric cars. And so guess what? Fuel consumption is going down, and the, and the revenue that's coming in is also going down. So we've seen that, pr that phenomenon happen with, uh, uh, with the tobacco tax most recently, right? Because we, we had tied um, the tobacco tax to, to the Cancer the, Research Center. The cancer, yeah. cancer Research Center, yeah. right? <laughs> and then guess, guess what they did? They raised the smoking age, right? So, and, and the it cancer worked center perfectly. was good. Yeah, it worked perfectly. <laughs> like, oh, how, how are we going to fund ourselves now? So um, <laughs> that's, that's the pickle they find themselves in. Yeah. Okay. So, so the question then becomes, um, what are they going to do to make the transportation tax system fairer? Okay. And what they consider fair uh, is that people who use the roads pay for the roads. Okay. So, so what they are envisioning is a, uh, a per mile usage charge of some kind. And so they uh, had some grand plans for this, and they wrote up an, uh, an, a grant application to the Federal Highway Administration because they have some money uh, that can be made available to states for doing uh, this kind of study. And the feds liked the program enough so that they said, OK, we're going to give you $4 million. Mm. Well, that's not much. Well, uh, it is what it is. Uh, we have to come up with a mil million and a half in cash uh, and uh, other uh, in-kind contributions, which the uh, Department of Transportation valued at about $11 million. So all told, uh, it's a $19 million project. Uh, the, 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 fed, the feds contribute $4 million. We contribute a million and a half. And uh, we get this big study done. So. Uh, the, the plan is for uh, the department to measure uh, your, your vehicle usage. Uh, typically, uh, when, when you drive a car, you have, to ha you have to do an annual safety check. It's required by law in, in all the counties. And they pick up your odometer reading from there. And uh, the plan is that they'll send you a bill. For whatever the... The miles are. Right, for whatever the miles are. That's all the roads. I mean, you could 
run freeways, you could run up and down Sierra Drive, doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Yeah, uh, on road, off road, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. But they'll, they'll track your mileage and they'll send you a bill. Okay, well, okay, is that fair? Um, again, it's, it's, it's really a question of degree uh, and, and what you think is fair. But it's, it's a very different system from what we have now. Mm. Uh, some people will find out that it's uh, it, it might save them money. I don't know. Some people will find out that they have to pay a lot more. Well, you know what strikes me just off off the off the top of my head is the, the people who live out in Oshkosh there in West Oahu. They have terrible time commuting. Terrible. They sit in traffic all day, partly because the highways are inadequate for them and uh, terrible congestion, it's painful. The number of hours they spend, it's, you know, it's in, it's in 30, 40 hours a month, they sit in traffic, like it's terrible. And then, in fact, they do more miles coming and going. They would be taxed more heavily under this program, wouldn't they? They, they, they would, and, and it's, uh, uh, it's a regressive system, yeah. which, which means that it uh, has no bearing uh, on how much you can pay or, or uh, what your net worth is. Uh, it's just a, it's just a matter of how, how far you drive your car. Yeah. We can do better, huh? Uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know what better is, though. I mean, is, you have, do you have a better system in mind? I don't know. Do you? We can invent one right here. You know? <laughs> what do you think, Tom? <laughs> um, we, we're not the first person, to, we're not the first state to try this. Uh, there, there are a few states that have um, done it uh, with, you know, a fair degrees of experimentation. Uh, in Oregon, for example, they have something called Oregon, uh, and 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 the and the idea is that you sign up your your vehicle, and uh, it is an alternative to the fuel tax. So what they do is they uh, they track your mileage and they calculate the amount of uh, tax that you would have to pay under their system. And if it comes out to less than what they pay on, on fuel tax, then they get money back. If it comes out to more, then they have to pay in. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's kind of a gamble with real money. Yeah, yeah. Some people aren't gonna like it. I mean, people don't like change. They don't like change in Hawaii. They don't like tax either in Hawaii. Um, but, so but let me let me give you let me give an idea of how the uh, the Oregon system works. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Oregon, their fuel tax is thirty cents a gallon. Okay, and is that more or less than what we pay? Uh, well, it, when when you when you add up the um, uh, state, county, and federal uh, gasoline taxes, uh, I think we pay more. Okay, uh, we pay. Something like um, uh, thirty-three or thirty-four cents a gallon, you know, a gallon on, on, on state, ta uh, state and county taxes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess it's comparable to to Oregon's okay. system. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, their per mile charge under Oregon uh, is one and a half cents a mile. Okay. So, you do the math, and you have your break even at twenty miles a gallon. What that means is that you, if, if your car is more fuel efficient than 20 miles a gallon, you will pay. If it is less fuel efficient, uh, you'll get your money back. So it's just kind of, kind of the opposite of, of uh, conventional thinking of what you want to reward versus what you don't. It, right? it really is, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is in existence now. This is working now. Yeah. Is it being accepted by the public? I'm, I'm not sure. It's like I said. It's a it's a trial project in Oregon. Yeah. It's, I think it started maybe a year ago. There's like five thousand vehicles that they're planning to do this with, and I'm, I'm not sure how it's going. It raises the question, though, is um, a, a number of questions in my mind. Uh, one is we we have failing infrastructure problems in this country. I mean, I became aware of this back way back when it was a a failure of the grid. And uh, the north, the northeast grid uh, in the country, it was huge failure. And I recall that Spencer Abram was the, um, you know, was the energy guy at the time. 
um, on the cabinet, on, you know, on the president's cabinet. It might have been Clinton, might have been. And uh, we had this failure, and he got up on television, he said, you don't understand. We put this grid in place, you know, like 40 years ago, after the war, um, and, it, it, you know, we haven't put anything else in to maintain it, to improve it, to handle, you know, the additional load. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to get old, it's going to fail. And, you know, the problem is, at least with the electrical grid, that, that you, need, you need to, you know, address the infrastructure. You need to take care of it. You need to improve it. You need to maintain it. Okay, and I, I, I don't think people were really aware until he said that, that we were living in a country of failing infrastructure. And then the bridge fell in, in I think it was Minnesota, was it? The bri bridge fell into the water. And everybody became aware, well, you know, bridges don't last forever. Sometimes they fail. And you, unless you maintain these pieces of infrastructure, you're going to lose them. And so we have highways in Hawaii and other states that are getting old, that are not meeting the demand. And we, we have a million cars on the road now. A lot of these roads, a freeway, for example, good example, were built when it was a fraction of a million cars. We've been selling cars like hotcakes all this time. And then, you know, you take a look at the potholes. And it's really sort of tragic that we haven't really fixed the potholes. And we haven't accounted for the cost of it either. I mean, you can say that we don't have enough money for it, but we don't have enough political will for it either. <laughs> One way or the other, you have to fix the infrastructure, or we are in a third world country. Um, so that's happening not only in Hawaii, but in other places in the country. Yeah, and I don't and think people are addressing it. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, uh, there was a study that was done of, uh, of all of the, uh, the, the, the state uh, transportation infrastructure conditions. It was done by this um, nonprofit called the Reason Foundation. And uh, they looked at the condition of our roads, bridges, and so forth, and, and, uh, when, and they, they compared us against other states. And, and, and we're, we're coming in close to the bottom of the list, close to the bottom. I think it was the 47th, 48th, something like that. So, um, and, 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 you know, how, how and, can and not only that, not only that, but uh, the problem is not only the existing condition of what we have, but the problem is how much it costs to fix it. Right, which increases. Uh, it, and, it's, and, and right now it's, it's um, uh, quite high. Yeah. I remember, uh, you know, Cliff Slater, who keeps on opposing rail and all that. In fact, there was an article recently, was it in Civil Beat? It was uh, Cliff Slater um, and Panos Prevaduros. You know, he's opposed rail from the beginning. And Randy Roth. And Randy Roth, the three yes. of them, yeah. Trying to do a you know, a Bishop of State type, you know, dispositive article on the subject. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, in the case of Slater, he, he has a bus and he took people around to show them where the rail was going to be. This is before construction started and, and he still believed that it would politically be stopped before it, construction started. Well, it didn't happen. And we took, we took the route. I was on the bus, took the route all the way in from West Oahu campus all the way in, you know, we wound up downtown when it just occurred to me that the whole thing had a huge absurdity to it because every road we drove in was a wreck <laughs> everywhere. And oh, there were potholes and, and, you know, what do you call it, infrastructure failures all along the way and we had not been able to fix them and yet we were committing to a project of somewhere between five and ten or more billion dollars which it was not clear we could pay for. Um, so you, you, you sort of add uh, liability on top of liability without a clue on how you're going to pay for any of it, including the original problem of congestion and potholes. Uh, this is, a, you know, I mean, you must spend your days and nights thinking about this, Tom. How are we going to pay these bills? And, and uh, I guess, and, and to add to what you, what you said, um, there, there are a number of highways uh, for which the state and the county governments disagree as to who's responsible for them. Right. Uh, this, is, this is the what we call the roads in limbo issue. Uh, and and it, it kind of dates back to the, uh, you know, right after the monarchy was, was overthrown. Uh, you know, during the monarchy, of course, there was no, no dispute. The, the, uh, there, there was one kingdom and it owned all the roads and had to, 
had responsibility for all of them. But when we became uh, a territory and then a state, then there was a, you know, uh, a state uh, instrumentality, and there were there were counties, and some of them had some of the roads, and others had others, and uh, it wasn't really clear as to who owned what. And and we never the, bellied up to the issue and resolved it. Yeah, and, and 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 you see, when you have a dispute like that, nobody wants to repair the road. You know why? They want to give it away to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> because if generally, if you repair it, you own it, and you're responsible for the maintenance from that point <laughs> forward. You take you take ownership. Yeah. You repair to repair is to take ownership. <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem terribly fair. At the end of the day, nobody repairs it. Let's take a short break, Tom. And when we come back, I'd like to ask you, you know, for your solution, I'd, li I'd like to ask you how you feel as a tax foundation of Hawaii about the problem that we are going to have to raise this money, probably by taxes. You know, billions and b tens of billions to fix all these infrastructure problems. What are we going to do and how are you going to feel about it? How are your constituents, you know, your supporters in the Tax Foundation going to feel about it? We'll take this short break and then Tom is going to answer those questions, I'm sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with Think Tech Hawaii and I'd like to ask you to come watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. Thanks for watching Think Tech this summer. We have a lot of terrific shows of great importance, and I hope you'll watch my show too every Tuesday at noon as we address sustainability issues for Hawaii. They're really pertinent as the World Conservation Congress approaches in September and the World Youth Congress that's focusing on sustainability next year as well. Have a great summer and tune in at noon every Tuesday. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. I know you're bored this summer. You're just sitting at home, figuring out what to do, go to the beach, spend some time with Think Tech Hawaii. Spend the time thinking about how you can contribute to Hawaii and making it a better place to live. And start watching some of the programs on Think Tech, including Stan the Energy Man, where you'll learn all about everything energy, especially hydrogen and transportation. So we'll see you every Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're here with uh, Tanya Wanchika of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii talking about taxes for transportation. I think we've agreed that we need, we need to fix the transportation system. And we yeah, don't have the money to do that. And you say taxes for the foundation for, for transportation in your article this morning at uh, Civil Beat. And that means I think we agree that there's a problem and that we're going to need more money. And the taxes are the only way anybody can think of to raise that money. So a lot of money, how are we going to raise that? I mean, is there something, is there an alternative to taxes or has it got to be taxes? And if it's got to be taxes, what kind of taxes and how are people going to react politically to that? Well, I mean, taxes are always a problem. And, and, and I guess the, I, I think um, it's less of a problem if the Department of Transportation or whoever we're giving this money to uh, can show us that the money is being well spent, efficient, and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, uh, right now, the, uh, the the study I was talking about, the one from the Reason Foundation, shows that that we're spending, uh, you know, right now, about three times as much per mile uh, as as say somebody like somebody like Oregon, and, and they're not they're not the most efficient uh, government in the world either, but but uh, at least they have uh, a better system than 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 than, than we have. I, I don't know if the uh, the problem is in the permitting, uh, it, whether it's in the cost of just basically providing any kind of transportation service. Whenever somebody picks up a shovel, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to cost so much money. Uh, I, I don't know if, it's part, if part of the problem is all of these post-employment benefits that we're giving all of our state workers. Uh, and that we're all going to have to pay but, for. But as, nobody as has come forward and said, Tom, let me explain. You know, there are good and valid reasons why it costs three times as much to build a, a mile of road in Hawaii than in Oregon. Nobody has actually answered that question, have they? Well, I, I think the Department of Transportation is trying to, you know, answer it. I, I, don't, I don't know um, whether that's going to be deemed sufficient by the public or not, but but uh, they're certainly in the position to 
provide answers to what they're doing, why they're doing it, and, and, and why it's costing so much. Um, we've pointed out before, and uh, the uh, Senate had hearings on this before, that uh, you know, not too long ago, uh, the Department of Transportation was, was, was in trouble with federal money, right? Because they couldn't spend it. They, they, were, they were sitting on close to a billion dollars in federal money that they couldn't spend. Why? For one of a number of reasons. Technical um, reasons. Like uh, they, they were unable to get their permits. They um, uh, you know, couldn't do their EIS t in, in a timely fashion or get it approved or people were suing uh, to, to, to stop the building of the road or to, to stop the expansion of the road. You know, all of these situations exist. I mean, you've seen them in H3, you've seen them in other uh, transportation projects. Uh, certainly, there are externalities like that, that that we do have to deal with here. But that's of great concern. Not so much that we lost the money. I mean, this is, this is of great concern, we lost the money. But because it demonstrates that we, we are locked up somehow. Whatever it is, in terms of permits or EIS or you know, governmental process in one way or another, we are unable to do something critical for our community. I mean, it's, it's like, um, this is the canary in the coal mine. If you, you know, it's, it's our circulatory system. It's the way we get around. It's the, it's the public spaces. You know, everything else is kind of private, but the public spaces where we get around, go from point A to point B, that is a measure of how well this community does. And if we can't build roads or fix roads or redesign roads to, to meet the changing, the changing uh, you know, community, then we're in big trouble. Yeah, and, and, and so what the Transportation Department has, has told me and, and the legislators is that they are you know, re-engineering what they spend, okay, uh, that they're spending more on maintenance uh, and less on capacity projects. Uh, so... Uh, because it's easier to spend for maintenance. You, you, can, you, can, uh, you don't need to typically go out with an EIS because the road's already there. You just, you're, you're just fixing it. So you can get people mobilized quicker. When you say fix, what, what do you mean fix? Like resurfacing or um, you know, seal coating or pothole patching. Okay. Isn't it well known though, at least in, in the city and county, isn't it well known that instead of putting down a heavy uh, level, have a layer of new, uh, you know, road material. We put down a really thin layer, so politically, it looks like we fixed the road. We spent a lot less money that way, but it doesn't last very long. You know, in a year, year and a half, two years, it's all busted up again. Um, so, you know, there's a real problem in that, that we we may be. This is John and Danilia. We may be having less maintenance for fixing the roads. But in fact, those fixes are not good. Everyone knows, it seems like, that the roads are not being properly fixed. Well, that's, that's again, a matter of political will as well, because um, if, if your decision is to fix the roads properly, as you put it, uh, then there's got to be an expenditure of money to, to do that. And, that. and that really comes down to the point of our whole discussion, is that we agree that the infrastructure needs, needs repair, maintenance, you know, improvement. Um, we need to build more roads. We, you know, have more cars on the road. We have more people living here. Uh, we need to attend to that. And it, as I say, it's it, our circulatory system. It's the canary in the coal mine. And so the question, and we so we that, that means that we have to raise a lot of money, billions, okay, not only for rail but for roads, but for just getting around. Um, how are we going to do that best? By do you, you know, if we don't like this idea of charging drivers by the mile for how much they drive on our roads, what better way? And, and how is that going to change? You know, I'm sure you're into this kind of analysis. Is if, if the community has to pay more money in taxes to achieve, you know, this basic level of service, re reasonable roads, um, how does that affect the community when they pay a greater and greater percentage especially on a regressive basis, a greater and greater percentage of their income. What is the ultimate effect of that, of that pain to the average Joe and to the community in general? Well, one, one, one thing that does happen is, is you squeeze taxpayers hard enough, they'll leave. 
town. They'll leave town. They'll leave the state. They'll go to Nevada, which has no income tax. They'll go to, to Delaware. They'll go to uh, California. They'll probably go past California because they, they, <laughs> they have problems just, just as bad or worse than us. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but they will leave. And, and, and um, there are studies that show that we have a net out-migration of residents, uh, and it's been so for every, uh, for every year in the past five or six years. Really? And this has got to be one factor in all of that. Yeah, so th this is the phenomenon called voting with your feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do we do? I make you governor. Presto, psh, you're governor. <laughs> what do you do? I, well, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not really in a position to make the tough policy choices. I mean, I'd, I'd probably get booted out before I ever probably did. Um, but, uh, you know, something's got to happen. Yeah. I mean, we, if, we have, uh, if we have a problem, we have to, you know, something's got to happen. And, and if, if, not, uh, if not immediately over time. Well, you know, the thing about it is we've been talking about infrastructure, we're talking about transportation. But there are other issues. There's a social safety net. There's the homeless problem, which I mean, people agree are going to cost billions to uh, fix. I don't know if you ever fix it, but at least you know keep it at a reasonable level. Um, so we have, and we have unfunded liabilities. For example, to the uh, ERS, we have we owe billions. The, the state owns billions, uh, owes billions to the ERS. And the EUTF, uh, for which the state owns bill owes billions more. Yeah. So, I mean, really, when you start looking at the landscape, we are surrounded with uh, liabilities funded and unfunded, or mostly unfunded, and we're, we are going to have to pay them, not the federal government, you know, not somebody else. It's going to have to come out of the, the, the pockets, if you will, of our, of our citizens here in the state. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to change the tax system. We need to raise rates. We're best. I mean, if you look at real property tax on the city side or income tax on the state side, where is the fairest way to get that money? Well, if you ask 30 different people what's, what's fairest, you'll get 30 different answers. Is there, is there a way to find out which is best? I mean, I forgot to mention gross excise, of course. So gross excise and income and then real property, those are our, those are our sources. Well, right, right now what, what happens is real property goes to the counties. General excise goes to the state. Net income tax goes to the state, and there, there's a there's a um, uh, we we mentioned a tax system being regressive. Uh, the only tax system that that isn't regressive is net income tax because that's that's based on how much ability you have to pay. Yeah, by definition, it's progressive. Right. So, uh, some combination of all of the above uh, is probably what's going to get you to where, where you need to be. Um, the people will disagree on what the, what the proper combination is. Would you agree with have. me about this, though? The legislature really must hunker down on this, and for that matter, the executive. They must hunker down. They must address this issue. They must decide where the priorities are, what kind of tax would be appropriate, and decide how much increase in order to uh, achieve greater funding for these these uh, important projects. Yeah, that's 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 why we uh, you know pay them their fabulous salaries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, all right. I, you know the, the session's coming up. I hope you'll join me again, and we'll take a look at what they're doing or not, and see if we can make comment on what they should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tom Yamachika. Great to have you here. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for having me on the show.